Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my Python 3 tutorial. This is part one of the tutorial, and I'm going to start off very, very basic here, but we're going to get very complicated over this video series. So first off, what you're going to need to do is go to python.org right here, and then click on Download. And then you want to look right here, get the most up-to-date version of Python whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux, or Unix, and download that. And I'm sure you can figure that out on your own. Then what we're going to do is after everything's been installed, you're going to see this little guy here, whether you, no matter what platform or operating system you're using, it's called Idle, and it allows you to write Python programs. Double click on that. We're later going to go into using a traditional IDE to develop Python programs. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. And whenever you open up Idle, you're going to see what is called the Python shell. You could actually write code in here, but I prefer to actually write my code in a file that I can save. So I want to click on File and New Window. Now, the way that I've laid this tutorial out is actually based off of votes that you guys left on my website. So you said you wanted my tutorials in the future to be more interactive so you can see exactly what I am doing. So that is exactly what you're going to get today. First off, this is one of the most simplistic things to do with programming language. What we're going to do is we're going to print the words hello world, and we're going to do that by calling a function called print in Python. Just look up here in the upper left hand corner, that's where I'm typing, and put a bracket in there. And what's nice about idle is it gives you all kinds of information on how this function actually functions. We want to print out a line of text. Surround it with brackets. And that's it. That's all you have to do with Python. Now, go to Run. And from now on, I'm going to hit F5 because that's a shortcut. And I have to give it a name. So I'm going to come over here, call it Hello HelloWorld.py. PY is important because that signifies that this is Python code. And I'm going to save it. And as soon as I hit replace over here, you see Hello World get printed out on the screen. So you say, that's not all that great. Well, now we're going to add some user interactivity with Python. Now instead, I'm going to say hi, and then I'm going to create a variable that I'm going to temporarily store whatever the user enters in on over here in this pane to the variable name name doesn't have to be name, it can be anything you want it to be. I'm going to call a function called input, and I'm going to type in quotes, but I can use single quotes also, just so you know. Enter your name. This colon doesn't have to be there, it's there only for aesthetic reasons. This is the part that's going to print on the screen. And then I'm going to print out on the screen. And then a comma followed by name. And then a closing brace. I'm going to hit F5. See here, it's asking me for my name. I enter my name, hit enter, and it says, Hi, Derek. Real simplistic, nice, easy program. Well, let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's ask for an age. And just so you know, no matter what is entered in here, I know this is a string of text and a string of text in Python is referred to as a string. No matter what is entered in here, it's going to be considered, meaning in here, meaning into the input function, it's going to be considered a string of text, even if they enter a number. Now I'm going to ask them to, and I'm going to ask them to give me the age. save to the variable age. I have to, if I'm going to do a comparison, what I'm going to do here is compare their age to my age, but this is a string of characters, like I said before. So what I have to do is change it into a number, or in programming terms, what is called an integer. And how I do that is I'm going to take the variable age, and I'm going to throw it into a function, and a function is just code that does a certain thing. This function here, input, takes in information that the user types in and print prints out whatever you put inside of quotes. And int, what it does, it stands for integer, is it turns whatever variable you put within brackets into it into an integer or a number without a decimal place. So I'm going to 
change age from a string into a number and then reassign it back to its original variable name. And then I'm going to ask what it is. So I'm going to say if age, I'm going to say is equal to, and it's sometimes nicer to put brackets around this, 35. And Python is different than other programming languages. Normally, in most programming languages, you, you would use curly braces to surround all the code that would be executed if age indeed was equal to 35. But Python does it different. Puts a colon after it, and then it indents four spaces. That's a default. So this is white space. That's how Python determines what code belongs to this if statement right here. So if the age is equal to 35, what I'm going to do is print out to the screen. You are the same age as me. But what do I do if they're not the same age? That's where else comes in. And what I'm going to do here, I just type in else. And this is just basic logic. I'm going to print out. And if I hit F5 to run this, you can see enter your name. I'm going to type my name. Enter my age. I'm going to type my age. And it's going to say you're the same age as me. Now if I go in here and type in, eh, let's just go over here. Run it again. Enter name. Enter my age. And you can see it automatically figured that logic out. So it's just a do you know how to use an if statement, an else statement, a print statement, and so forth and so on? So that's nice and usable. What I'm going to do is show you exactly how these guys change and go a little bit into this function right here. Now you see I created a variable named age, and if I want to find out what type of variable that actually is, I can use a function called type. So with the print command, I'm now going to run a function inside of the print command. It's going to tell me what age is variable type wise. So you type in age. And then we're going to do the same exact thing here. And let's chop this off at the end here because we don't need we don't really need that there either. And then we're going to put another print command here. And we're going to show how this variable changed because of the int function. F5, run it. And you can see here, it was a string, str, that is variable age, and then it went into the integer function, and now it is an integer. And you can do all kinds of other little neat things. Normally, if whenever you're going to be running Python, you're going to be doing it on a Unix platform. Mac OS X is a Unix platform, though. Whenever this code is run, it, this line of text up here is going to tell the shell in Unix or Linux where the location is of the interpreter that can interpret this code. So this is common. We don't need to do this because we're doing this with idle. And that's just another thing that you should have in your code. And another thing that's useful is making comments. Anything that follows a hash mark is ignored inside of Python. So we're going to say my first program, just to be simple. You could also do multi-line comments by putting three quote symbols. You could also do that. And then, again, this is all going to be ignored inside of Python. So that's a basic rundown of the beginnings and how to basically use Python and how to install it. Next up, we're going to get complicated real fast. I'm going to jump right in here and teach you a lot about different variables and all of the methods or functions that are available to those variables. See you next time.